Hello, hi, welcome again to Hope Alive. It's Mary. Always a pleasure to be here. I hope you're doing great. Hope you're doing good wherever you are. And um, please, 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 please subscribe to this channel if you haven't like it, share it, and leave me a comment. Let me know how this channel has been a blessing to you. This is the hub of hope. Hope, hope, hope. Without hope, you lose everything in life. We need that encouragement to keep our hope strong and alive because without that hope, you're gone. Your gone. Hope is what gives you the anticipation, give you the desire, the zeal and the passion to live, believing that one day this will turn around. Hope causes you and allows you to find purpose in your pain. You begin to find meaning and a purpose in your pain and it makes it easier to be it. All right. So going straight to what I'm about to, to talk about today, and I'm going to title this Save Your, Save Yourself. Save Your, Save Yourself. You know what? Sometimes, sometimes, purpose will cause you to go through things, pass you through things, allow you to experience things that you are called to help others solve. And you are helping others solve it, but your life is not, in quote, reflecting what you're teaching. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. You know, for instance, I've seen people who minister to barren women that are under their ministry, loads and loads and loads of, there's a grace in their life to minister to childless or barren women or families and they receive children. But in their own life, they don't have a child. I remember this uh, uh, general overseer, uh, Ulukoya, I believe, of Mountain of Fire. For several years of his marriage, they did not have a child. But under his ministry, loads and loads of tons of women have testified of God using him to cause them to have children. And then you begin to wonder that the same person who is laying hands on people and getting healed might even have ailments in themselves. I've heard of pastors who have died. I mean, I'm not saying that it is God's will, but what I'm saying is that sometimes purpose will cause you to go through things, experience things, just so that you can be the best person for God to use for that you know, event. And while you're waiting for your own turn around, you might begin to experience other people having their deliverance and turn around. And sometimes it begins to make your life look like a ridicule. It begins to make your life look like a ridicule. And you begin to, if you don't understand purpose, you begin to wonder, how come I pray for people and this happen? I pray for people and this happen? And I'm not seeing that breakthrough in my life. I'll pray for people, they get their breakthrough. But I am here seeking this breakthrough. And it's like, it's not happening. And your life actually literally begins to look like a ridicule. If you're not question, careful, you begin to question your calling. You begin to question God. And let me tell you, I'm here to encourage such a person today. Never to give up. God knows why he's allowing you to experience what you have experienced or you are experienced, experiencing right now. God knows why he has allowed all those things to happen. He knows what he's training you for. He's allowed you so that you are the best fit for the job. You are coming from the place of empathy. You are forming for someone who understands, who knows the pain. So that when you minister to people, you are ministering from the place of, of you know, and again, why? because you have also prayed so much for that issue in your life, you also know how to minister best. You know how what the person is feeling. You've walked in the person's shoes and you have walked in the miles as well. I hope this is making sense to you. This, you know, the scripture that comes to mind for this will be Jesus' case. Remember when Jesus went on the cross? He was, this is Jesus Christ going through an experience who was, you know, what looks like. He came to save sinners. And here he was dying like a sinner. Okay. And then we had these two criminals. The Bible said we are on both sides of him. Here, here we look what one of them said. He said, Bible says in Luke chapter 23, Verse 39, 23 verse 39 says, Bible says, one of the criminals who hung there hauled insults on him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. 
This is the experience that Jesus Christ himself had. This guy was hurling insults on Jesus. Jesus this guy was, the Bible says, another translation say, heaped insults on him. Are you not the Christ? Some say, are you not the Savior? Are you not the Messiah? Why can't you save yourself? How come you are here with us? And you might be experiencing that. You might have heard it directly said to you or indirectly. Oh, you, you, you're you doing, doing this. You think you are this. You think you are that. Even in your life, we are not seeing it. Don't be discouraged by that. Don't let it discourage you. If there's anything, it should be a bit more of encouragement to you. Knowing fully well that if God can use you to bring that to pass, it's not a difficult thing with God. God will come to you. And that to Lucaya that I spoke about, after many years of childlessness, God honored his name in his life. He's got his own child now to show for it. I don't know if he's got a second one, but I do remember it was all over the place when the news of his child came. So I don't know what it is that you're called to. As I said from the beginning, purpose will cause you to walk in different miles, walk in places, go through experiences, go through things that you are called to solve. And while you're going through it, you are still ministering to others. You're still seeing God doing it in the lives of others. But don't be discouraged because yours is coming. I hope this was a blessing to someone. And if it was, please do share. Leave me a comment. Let me know how it's a blessing to you. I'll see you again very soon. In the meantime, keep your hope strong and alive. Bye-bye.